Good evening, and welcome to a special bonus of the U Talk Show, brought to you by Carl's move last week, resulting in only three episodes. But there's always more to discuss. Now, from Don Chip's claim that he would keep the bastards honest, to Paul Keating's legendary retort to Dr. Hewson, I want to do you slowly. Australians have, in politics as in many other facets of life, not shied away from things which may make them sound like utter wankers. Yet, we find ourselves at a strange nadir in our political discourse. We are shying away from being wankers. That's not very Australian of us. Why did it happen? When will it stop? And, most importantly... Does taking away our ability to engage bluntly and honestly in our society actually damage that society? Is political correctness going mad? Kyle? A man after Andrew Bolt's own heart. (laughs) Wow, thanks. I feel dirty now. That was the intention. (laughs) Okay, I didn't do the thing that I was just thinking of. But it was, let's just say it it, it involved a a lot of tongue and a lot of the making of certain noises. While I'm sure that a lot of tongue may be something that interests other people about you, it's not something with which you can seduce me. (laughs) But more to the point, I believe we were discussing the fact that a certain amount of lip has been missing from our political discourse. Yes. So keep your tongue in your pants. I mean, look, essentially, what is the impact of being politically correct? I mean, for me, this seems like an easy one. I I could list a lot of reasons. You know, See, it, I think it, the uh, idea of political correctness to begin with is just a weasel word. It's it's so poorly defined that a lot of people are sort of saying, oh, you know, I can't be blatantly racist anymore, and that's political well, correctness gone mad. Well, there's that, but I'm, you know, what I'm referring to, though, is essentially when when politeness damages society. You know, that is the impact of being politically correct. And so we need to examine, you know, when does essentially that politeness damage society? Well, first off, studies have shown that people that swear more often are actually more honest. Um, very fucking right, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the bleep track for this one's going to be wild. No, oh, no, no bleeping in this one. We're we're going all the way up balls to the fucking wall, cunts. <laughs> we're gonna get so fucking, uh, you know, M M A fifteen, you know. R21. Oh no, Kyle, plus. we're going to get demonetized. <laughs> oh, please, we were never monetized. Oh, no, that's with... actually, no, sorry, that's actually worth pointing out, right? Um, that <laughs> There are a number of uh, YouTube channels that have um, right, yeah. in the past depended on ad revenue, and they found that certain videos uh, have been made ineligible for ad ad revenue yeah. demonetized as it's called because they have had too glib a tongue or because they have expressed an opinion that can be seen as socially damaging or because they've just sworn way too many times and personally i think the latter category is a load of horse hockey pardon me i mean absolute bullshit um so we have to look That's at this a as a sort of a, a creeping a creeping effect of um of uh larger corporations that also shape and control political discourse imposing their own constraints on that political discourse which may not be culturally appropriate in all of the markets that they service yeah and like that you know that i mean just that alone on on youtube you know the platform we're on right now um or at least where this video will be posted once we're uh once we're done recording it's okay. We're, we're hoping that... that one day we will be able to join the illustrious Therapy Gecko on Spotify. <laughs> and that you can listen to us blather on your drive into work. Oh, that'd be so lovely. 
but anyway, before we run out of time while joking <laughs> like anything, you know, that, like, even even he just on YouTube, you know, we, we've seen political discussion stifled and, you know, learning, like, very valuable learning materials not able to even remain on the platform. You know, we've seen, like, the fact that, oh, oh, I love Nebula. Nebula is a service I'm subscribed to. I'm mm -hmm. very much considering uh, actually putting our entire library on Nebula. Now, the reason for that is is because like Nebula, like Nebula, it doesn't penalize its creators. You know, you can swear all you yes, want. Yes, but Nebula, it also isn't dependent on ad revenue. Well, that, true. Like, that's dependent. the problem. It's, Nebula is a subscription service. It's like how yes. cable TV. But you used also to get has all of your nice. Model. Yeah, but it's like how you used to get all your skin flicks on cable, right? Because on cable TV, you're already paying for cable. It doesn't matter if they're showing you two actors having sex. Like, the advertisers aren't where they're making money. Yeah, but see, he's... He, unless you're Fox Deli. Eh? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, with that being said, you know, even, like, on YouTube, like, the fact that Nebula has to exist for creators to talk about um, certain subjects, for creators to just be able to, to do the content um, that is valuable to their audience. You know, it, it just shows how, how politeness can really damage society. That is stifling debate. It is stifling discussion. It is stifling... But is that truly politeness ideas. or is it non-compliance with terms of service? Because no, let me I mean, tell you, you can say some very, very disturbing things while being unfailingly polite. Hmm. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, look, it, it to fully go through that's a bit complicated, and I think would probably take a bit too long to unwrap how that works on YouTube. But the end result essentially is still that it it, it stifles debate. It stifles discussion, you know. It it basically takes, like I see the I see the internet as the largest library of information, and the largest and most unrestricted free marketplace of ideas. And essentially, it is taking those ideas away from that that free marketplace of ideas. It is taking them out of it, and that just leaves the trash. <laughs> As you know, someone when, who when... was around when GeoCities was at its height, trust me, not all of the ideas in the free marketplace are good. Well, I, I completely agree, but the, the, the <laughs> natural state of the internet is where bad ideas go to die. I've seen oh, it absolutely. time and time again. You know, like, like the uh... best the best that bad ideas ever get is they get relegated to some particular Reddit thread that is like really niche and has like five people on it. You know, and so... So what does it? What does politeness do? Well, it's it stifles it it stifles debate, you know, it takes ideas out of it. But let's go beyond that. That's like surface layer. It what really it does. does sound let's at this point like you're level. not against politeness so much as you are against corporatism, corporate interests dictating well, yes. what debate is and isn't appropriate. Well, yes, <laughs> that is that is true. But let's go a level below that and go to really you know, where politeness or being politically correct and where essentially governing people's speech. Um, and just to be <clears> clear, <throat> you know, we're not talking about harassment. Harassment is is uh, repeated unwanted contact. Um, and that, you know, we're not talking about that. We are talking about the ability to speak your mind. And, and so to go to that second layer, if you are not able to speak your mind... If you do not feel comfortable to 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 do so, or if other people who you are listening to are not able to speak their mind, then concerns don't get answered. Now, some I mean, people... I feel like the other half of that. Sorry, I, mm -hmm. I do need to point this out. The other go half for, of that is that um, there are some people who will hold ideas very deeply that are counter to social cohesion, that are counter to the operation of a society. There are going to be people who do not believe, as you and I do, that harassment is unacceptable. There are going to be people who believe that that person was mean to me on the internet. Fuck them up. And those people should be allowed to expose themselves so that we know where the dangers are. Hmm. Well, let's see, that's another thing. Um, 
but yeah, so you know, essentially, if you if you allow for it, you know, if you if you basically give people the space, in a sense, um, a safe space, if you will, to express all of their oh, the ideas, irony. regardless. The irony, regardless, <laughs> regardless of, of whether or not you find those ideas to be disquieting or dis or uncomfortable then what you get is you you know when somebody is by any moral standard objectionable essentially you know when somebody's really just a cunt and you know when you get the ability to filter really... on yeah. your terms because you know that someone is not being forced to moderate their opinions to appease someone else's power structure you know what yeah. you are getting and you know when you need to run like hell yeah and and additionally you also it also gives the chance for people's concerns to be answered. If people aren't able to bring their concerns forward, essentially they don't have them answered and it just festers. They just keep thinking it inter internally until it does get into the realm of the extreme. You know, someone take take the um take the, the referendum coming up, the uh indigenous voice to parliament. If if people don't if people aren't able to bring up their concerns, however unfounded they may be, with you know if they aren't able to bring up those concerns without being labeled a racist or, or labeled a terrible person, you know if, if the social if the social um, whiplash from that you know is is applied indiscriminately and and they are forced to to quiet down and not have their their concerns answered, then how in the hell of it are we going to, to show them that the voice to parliament doesn't have any actual power and that people saying it has things like veto power are just liars. They're just lying to them. Sorry, I'm just reminded of um something that I saw a while ago. It's come to mind and it's it's the best we're going to do in this entire thing, right? Mm -hmm. So a recent survey found that 30% of Australians are casual, relate, uh, are casual racists. This means, of course, what? the other 70% are full-timers. For a second there, I thought you were going to make a serious point, not a joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I don't know why I find that that funny. Um. But again, the other thing I will point out is this idea of political correctness is very, very nebulous. And in every respect, we have referred to something that is not politically incorrect, but is socially incorrect, uh, such as a, um, a wrongly held animus towards a group in society um, or um, a belief that someone is less than or swearing too much for a platform's liking these are these are not really political incorrectness are they it's it's you know how you said before that identity politics has replaced um real concerns with just these convenient buckets yeah it strikes me that the idea of political correctness is certainly identitarian adjacent in this respect it doesn't yeah. by itself actually I mean, look, have a real meaning yeah well this is actually if i could uh delve slightly into into yep. media machine theory for a moment here of course um, we have to yeah see that's actually part of the part of a very sinister way in which media machines are presenting themselves as different you know is essentially they are while while promoting a certain form of political correctness you know, essentially, these are our sacred cows. Don't touch them. You know, while while promoting that, they're also claiming to be anti political correctness, be and and using the examples of them being against uh, treating other people's sacred cows as sacred. And so, essentially, they they can they can they can they can play both sides. You know, they can be entirely identitarian in their in their coverage of of issues, and also they can. They can bring, they can divert the debate into identitarianism and make everything about identity politics while at the same time claiming to be anti identity politics and anti, you know, anti um, political correctness, such as when they're okay. saying, you know, anti wokeness, for example. Mm. 
like, I was I was thinking of the, um the, yeah parlor well, yeah, and yeah. truth social um yeah. which I'm I'm not sure whether they would count as media machines though I would argue that to a very specific audience they are but when you well, have these when you have those, these those groups are that are saying we are saying the things that other people don't want to say we are saying the things that other people have tried to silence us for but it turns out that the things that are being said are still only one viewpoint um an attempt to yeah. refute the views of the people on there will be met in the same way yeah i mean it'll it'll be the exact same thing so do you I consider guess, that parler and true social are also sort of uh, they have a political norming, a political correct stance, a politically correct stance for their environment. In a way, yes. In a way, yes. In in a way, yes, they would. However, I wouldn't define them as media machines because they're not particularly media operations. They're more forums, less public. Oh yeah, they're absolutely people screaming you know. into the void. But yeah, but you know. So but way, that being said, your your point does very much stand there. You know, it, they are they are very much um, like that. So, yeah, is there, I mean, is there really anything else to say about this? We've sort of delved into how it works, what damage it can do, and, you know, how the media treats it. And also the fact that politically correct is a function of environment, not a function of opinion, and that there are situations in which what is politically correct would be, in fact, abhorrent by any objective standard. Hmm. Function of environment, not opinion. How so? Because I would think it'd be entirely a function of opinion. Well, what is politically correct is a function of environment. Because if all the people around you believe one thing, then saying something that is to the contrary of that in that environment is politically incorrect. For instance, uh, let's okay, say, okay. So what let's saying, say right here I need, I need that slavery this. is bad. Let's say that slavery to, is bad. Before you get to that, because it, it sounds like what you're saying, is it's <clears> kind of like it's a product of environment in kind of a hive mind sort of way. Yes, Whereas what we would describe as an echo chamber. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, I think there's, I think there's probably a, a better way that we could define it. Because essentially... Any kind of like an echo chamber or a hive mind, it's, it's almost like a like a wave of um, a wave of um, outrage and bad decisions. Well, I was I was gonna say um, uh, I like a there's a word I'm looking for. It's kind of I'm trying to look for a word to regard like the. Essentially, the the creation of a new social norm. Or the, or yeah, the okay. If I if I can finish norm. my example there, if I can finish okay, my yeah. example, yeah. like well, you and I both Twitter, believe that so, yeah, we'll you and I both believe that slavery is bad, as do I sincerely hope the overwhelming majority of Australians. Um, no, now, no, no, mate. Like you know. It's... That, Having a free I will serve punch you in the like... dick. <laughs> I will punch you in the dick, Kyle. I know where you live. Oh, man, now, I just want to serve. Let's say, let's say that we we say that slavery is bad. That is politically correct because it is compliant with the philosophies of those around us. Now, let's say mm -hmm. that we find a website full of people who unironically want a free servant. A, a website full of people who believe that slavery is absolutely fine. And we say to them, hey, have you considered that uh, maybe keeping other humans as your personal playthings might not be the most ethical? In this case, it doesn't matter. We are the outliers. We are being politically incorrect by stating something that is counter to the norms of that group. Mm. This is what I, I mean do... about environment instead of opinion. Because the environment is made up of a, a group of people who are at least somewhat like-minded, like-minded enough not to fall apart over everyday interactions. Yeah. Well that's why I use like the hive mind sort of example. It's <laughs> kinda of like a kind of like a hive mind where it kind of, you know, it kind of starts with and it's kind of a reinforcing, well, kind of like an echo chamber, like you said, just reinforces itself swirling around in the hive mind. And any voice mm. that contradicts that just gets crushed by the wave of that of that 
hive mind um, churning. Does that make sense? Ish. Yeah. Anyway, I think we'll end <laughs> it's on It's not that metaphorically we'll correct. <laughs> I mean, look, we'll, we'll end on that because that's, uh, that's you know, we've run over time, but that was an interesting discussion. Thank you for having that with me, Horst. And, uh, well, that's the second of this week's bonus videos done. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you later. Good night all. Take care.